Hello everybody, Christian from Treasure Town here, and I love third-party grading. Well, I'm going to be going through at least 12 reasons why I'm a big fan of third-party grading and authentication, PCGS, MGC, possibly ANAX, but really they've done so much for the coin hobby, and we're going to be getting into all the positives. Um, I've seen some people being pretty negative on the grading companies in my comments, and I wanted to give my thoughts and explain why I think this is crucial and one of the main reasons that we have a strong numismatic marketplace and sort of robust situation today. So I typed out a long list and I may be jumping around a little bit, but the first reason and it's the biggest reason is that it allows so much more confidence to be placed into buying coins. And this takes so many different forms, but the big thing in terms of determining if something is investable or worth putting money or, you know, if it's worth a lot of money, nobody's going to want to put you know, their time and money into it unless they feel like they have confidence. And that's what third party grading and authentication has really done. Because the biggest thing is that understanding the condition of the coin, you know, it doesn't sound that important uh, to somebody who doesn't know much, or maybe they just say, oh, this one's shiny, this one isn't. Uh, but it really is critical because it allows so much more, and we'll get into that later in the video. It also, uh, outside of like the ancient coins, you know, I know NGC doesn't give a guarantee for their ancient coin grading service, but it is a third-party authentication. So there's obviously a lot of catching of counterfeit coins, and you know, there can be uh, th theories of, of fakes and, and that will be, I'll make a counterpart video of some of the downsides, but I'm more focused, you know, overall on the scale of, do I like coin grading and do I not? I'm way towards the liking it, but the confidence that it instills, you know, in terms of making sure that your coins are real, that's a huge, you know, that's a much bigger difference whether something is really a mint state 64 or mint state 66, um, is if it's mint state 65 or if it's a fake, you know, manufactured coin that's designed to rip you off. So the big, big thing is that the conference brought about by understanding the condition by a group of experts, of course it's subjective and there can be some differences, but then there's also the confidence in the authenticity. I think one of the other biggest things is that it helps avoid a lot of coin scams as well as dealing with altered and sort of not counterfeit, but coins that have been um, treated in some way, they've been cleaned, dipped excessively, whizzed, there's all sorts of uh, things that coin doctors try to do to artificially, you know, move a little bit of metal around or remove some spotting from a surface or cover a scratch up. You know, there's definitely people that are still able to get by and it's sort of market acceptable and the grading companies are fine grading these coins, but they catch any of the really, really bad situations, certainly, you know, and if a coin looks perfect and it's not detectable that the doctor is there, I don't think, you know, it doesn't sound right, but at the end of the day, you can't, you know, you can't say that that's not, you know, if it looks fine, then it, it is fine, basically, is how I would view it, but it catches a lot of the coins that might be sold, you know, a, a mint state Morgan dollar, some of them are super conditionally rare, and if you have something that's been touched up, you know, that can really be a massive swing in, in value if it's unk details versus mint state 64, even if you look at like an 1884S, huge differences in the values. And being able to detect and have people that really, really know coins well give you an explanation of the grade is going to be super important in terms of having people comfortable, again, buying really nice coins because they feel like it's certainly been backed up and then on the other the converse side pcgs mgc they have a lot of money so if they do determine that one of their coins you know that they've graded is a problem or they've messed up you know they bit care a ton about how much confidence people have in their grading services so they'll purchase that coin and you know there's a example i think of a 63 lincoln cent maybe it was proof 70 or something and it was a $40,000 coin that somebody bought to complete a top pop, you know, set registry collection. And then there was a tiny bit of carbon spotting that formed on the coin. They paid full market value, took a big loss, but were able to sort of back up their brand. So, you know, that's just an example of where it's super, super important that you are avoiding it. And it sort of creates a problem where there can be these high end raw coins um, that aren't getting submitted, but you know that there's probably a major problem with those coins and that's why they're sitting there raw because they're trying to cover up something that they've done and you know 50 40 years ago you're having all of these coins where people would mark them up way higher than they should be and people paying for them and immediately 
I'm getting crushed. This really brings the spread on. You can buy a coin and then probably auction it. If you bought it at auction, go auction it again and you should be able to get 85 to 90% the next day. So that's super important. I'm not always gonna go into super detail, but one other nice thing is you can distinguish the really high end of coins from like the high end of coins. So it does create a place where people can really pay tons of money to truly purchase the best that goes in line nicely with the set registry which is a program that's why pcgs is probably stronger on the u.s side than ngc um you know there's also a few other factors but people want to compete and have a register uh registered set of their coins that they've gotten graded that they own and then they can say like oh i've got the highest average point total in grades and that's built up PCGS, but it also means that people can pay more for the really nice things. And then in, you know, the next uh, effect of that is that really makes an environment where people who are good at grading and dealers who can grade well can make a lot of money um, and not necessarily just by ripping people off and then, you know, selling the coins for way more than they're worth. But you can also have pe people buying from other dealers and making a lot of money by, um, you know, upgrading the coins. It's not something where a lot of people are, but are doing it well, but if you have a good eye, there are some people who do phenomenally well in the coin industry. And I think it's great that it's not just a matter of buying coins from people who have no idea what the value is and then mark the, you know, pay them 20% of the value and sell them at a great profit for yourself. I think that the more different ways that people can do it without, you know, do it like sharking people, that's super important for a hobby and helps it again because the third party grading adds a whole nother thing where it's providing services to collectors, but also a viable income source for a lot of dealers. One thing that you might not be super aware that goes on is sight unseen buying. So it makes it a lot easier for people to say, hey, I trust the PCGS brand. You know, if I put out an offer for Mint State 65 Morgan dollars, I'm not gonna get the nicest Mint State 65 Morgan dollars. People wouldn't be selling them, but you can have bids and a lot more liquidity where people can pay without having seen the coin. They're probably pretty confident in terms of what it is and you know, they can always send it back, that sort of thing. But um, it allows people to pay stronger without having seen the coins, which is pretty obvious, but maybe you haven't thought of it. It also allows there to be more of an understanding of how rare certain coins are. They maintain pretty strong pop reports that explain the population of different coins. So, you know, how many have been graded in 62, 63, 64, 65, 66. You can really truly determine what is a super rare coin versus what, you know, on the peace dollars, which had a bunch of $1,000 um, coin bags emerging from the treasury and they were all in really nice condition versus maybe some of the San Francisco mints had very weak strikes and some problems overall. So you can tell sort of what's going to be properly conditionally rare so that um, especially people, and this is another thing, people who don't have quite as much knowledge can get in and feel comfortable not getting destroyed. I mean, I think that it's still always the case that you really want to do a lot of research before you uh, start buying coins, especially anything, you know, real monetary sums. But um, you know, I, th I think it's definitely something that's helped a lot of people feel like they're more of an investable class, which is, you know, maybe not, it, maybe that's not the goal is to have all of coins being an investment, but I think it's good that you do have that money that inflows. It's going to push everything up. Um, and it's also probably going to appreciate, uh, you know, if you look at historical trends, not an investment advisor, and you know, you never know, there's a lot of coins that are, you know, still 30% of what they were in the eighties. So um, and, and that will be in the cons of grading section. But um, I think that's something I really wanted to bring up. There's also the aspect of identifying coins. So often, you know, people don't know which uh, coins they may have, especially I'm thinking with ancients, medievals. Um, so that could be a really important piece and, and part of the process is good coin identification and knowledge because the people that they um, have grading uh, they're going to be super knowledgeable. It also helps dealers, you know, maybe they go grade for four, eight years and then go on their own and start a coin company or are in the business. So it's sort of like a dual sided relationship where they're putting out a lot of really nice news, social media content. They have a big sort of marketing wing and they care about that. Um, so they're also super interested in seeing the coin industry thrive and their goals are sort of aligned with that. Um, they have, you know, a lot of money and profit that flows through them, but that also means that they can reinvest that and sort of continue to help the, the market from a sort of just overall people being interested in coins perspective, people being involved again in coins that aren't necessarily just dealing the coins. Um, and then you also have a lot more information that gets published again, whether it goes back to the pop report or it goes back to 
you know, different features and they want to be able to explain their grades really well, but they're also going to do a lot of research on things like varieties, which is a super small area of collecting, but something that I think is interesting. Same thing with errors, mint errors. Um, they each have robust and really nice um, facets and wings there where they have the top experts um, when they go out into fields because they care so much about their guarantees and care about their image that they're not going to do something. I'm talking about PCGS and NGC. You know, I'm not going to speak on some of the other companies, but those top two, you know, they really are going to want to back up their brand because it reflects on each one of their coins. If they start slabbing fake coins or they start, you know, messing up a lot, their da the, the damage to their reputation can be massive. So they're really going to care and do things right when they have it. That's probably why PCGS doesn't have an ancient coin department, you know, and, and they are very careful on world coins. You know, they've got the gold shield. They're taking photos of each coin because they want to be very careful about not slabbing fake ones. The very last one is that I think the PCGS especially does a phenomenal job imaging coins. And these coin images are, you know, I think people underestimate how important really nice images of coins are. And PCGS has done a great job with that. Uh, because most of their coins you do end up getting a really high quality photo that of course is marketing for them but also is just really really nice to be able to look at but I think the whole thing is that these companies could not survive without the industry doing well so they're aligned um, with that they also make the industry a lot better by giving people confidence and allowing it to be more collectible in so many different facets just beyond assigning the grade um, there can be a few drawbacks, so stay tuned for a video in the next few weeks, which will probably be dramatically titled like I hate coin grading or something like that. And then I'll clarify in the intro that that's not true. Um, but <laughs> anyways, hope that this was helpful. Maybe gave you some perspective that you haven't thought as much about in terms of your approach to looking at the grading companies. Thanks for watching the video. I'd encourage you to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel to stay updated. I've also got Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, so you can follow me there. Um, TreasureTownYT.com is the main channel website. Definitely give that a visit. I've got a lot of information about me up there and the channel. Uh, CoinGrabBag.com as well currently redirects there, but it's some good opportunities for very fair grab bags, both made by me and other sellers. A lot of different options, so that's a good way to support. Um, there's also TreasureTownCoins.com. In the future, my coin dealing uh, operation will be done out of that website. Uh, CoinMeltPrice.com for updates on the melt prices of your coins, both U.S. and world. A lot of resources in that website. And then CoinsMetalsCards.com being developed right now as a marketplace and news source for coins, metals, cards, and collectibles in general. So I'll see you on my future videos. Looking forward to seeing you there and hope you have a good day.